Hello and welcome to the video related to chapter 3 of the book Interaction Design Beyond Human-Computer Interaction, the 5th edition. The chapter name is Conceptualizing Interaction and in this video we will talk about conceptualizing, interaction types, metaphors, paradigms, vision, theories, models and frameworks. Let's, let's start with conceptualizing. Why we need it? Oftentimes, the words we use, even though we speak the same language, may have different meaning for different people. The situation gets more complicated when we have people from different disciplines or different sectors, like academia and industry, or even from different cultures. So it is really important to be sure that what we are going to develop is exactly what is expected. To do that, we can use, for example, sketching, so to make more concrete our ideas and visualize them, so everyone to understand what we're talking about. Conceptualizing can support designers on avoiding stereotyping. The following framework, for example, can help. The framework consists of four questions. First, are there problems with an existing product or user experience? If so, what are they? Second, why do you think there are problems? Third, what evidence do you have to support the existence of these problems? And finally, how do you think your proposed design ideas might overcome these problems? The benefits of conceptualization are many. Here we will talk about three. Orientation. By asking questions, we can better understand the users and the different stakeholders and their mental model, what they think. We can have open-mindedness open uh, through questions and exploring different ideas, which could be uh, started by having different perceptions of the same thing before we start making, making it more concrete. Also, common ground, which is important to know that we are all in the same page and we are not going to design and develop something that is not accepted from someone in the group. Models can be a visual representation of a system, a simple representa visual representation of a system. Some mod models have their own vocabulary, like the UML language. We can use different concept tools as well to communicate and conceptualize, like storyboards, scenarios and images. Let's move on to the interaction types. We will talk about five interaction types. Types: Inst Instructing, com conversing, manipulating, exploring, and responding. The most common interaction of the day is the instructing, when we tell to the computer what to do. In the picture, we see a couple of ladies um, connecting and disconnecting some cables. This is the first computer, ENIAC, and you can find a video of how they were using it in the description of the current video. On the right, we can see a menu that exists now for Windows. So we can see that we can instruct the computer to save a file or to save a file with a different name, with Save Us. So it's still we're still instructing the computer to do something. Conversing is when we are talking to a computer, to, to them artifact, like it happens with Siri, Alexa and Google. Manipulating is when we actually touch and manipulate the machine. It can be virtually or physically. Uh, as we see in the first picture, it's a virtual hand touching a ball 
And in the video from MIT, where it is manipulation of the of an artifact for a distance from distance. The link for the video is in the description, but here we can see some of it. Like here. As we can see, a person the person from the screen can manipulate the ball. Feel free to see the full video uh, from by clicking the link in the description. The next type of interface is exploring. Here the user moves in the physical space and this movement is transferred to the digital space. So they can explore the digital space by moving physically. Finally, the responding interface, where it pushes you notifications based on your position, like uh, Google Now, that it can see where you are and based on that suggest different restaurants if it is the lunch time. Let us talk about artificial intelligence. When we design a system that can take actions, these actions need to be 100% under the control of the user. The system shouldn't react to the user's demands in a way that the user doesn't expect. This may frustrate the user. Another um, interaction is through WIMP that stands from Windows, Icons, Menus and Pointers. You can see one of the first presentations of WIMP on the television in this video in the description. Keep in mind the video has a mistake on the last meaning uh, of the last um, a letter, the P, it's pointers. The final part of this video is about metaphors, paradigms, visions, theories, models, and frameworks. Let's start with metaphors. Metaphors are influenced by the world. The world. So, for example, um, floppy disk means save in the digital world. That is because when the computer started, we were using floppy disks to save. Nowadays, we don't use any floppy disks, but the icon stayed in the digital environment and it means save. We can see here in one of the pictures that in the computers we have files and we make them out of the physical files so they have this image. So these metaphors are taken from the real world. Paradigms. Paradigms are a set of practices one adopts usually driven by different communities. For example, the user-centered design and the uh, participatory design. Both of them focus on the user, but the participatory design uh, focus more on the user's involvement, user's empowerment, and user's right when it comes to design. Visions is a glimpse of the future, what we think that the future should look like. And here you can follow the link in the description to see a video from 1989 and how people then envisioned the home of 2020. Theories can be presented as lenses. Um, for example, motivational theories, theories that can motivate people to do an action, can be a goal setting theory. So you, you set goals for the person to be motivated and do an action and uh, social cognitive theory, where you say that how the environment, the social environment can influence the person's actions. So there are different lenses. And in human-computer interaction, we can use theories from other fields as well. 
like behavioral change as I described before. It's important to know that theory influence practice and practice influence theory. So we can create theory by doing and the theory is applied in practice and oftentimes changes. Models. The models are based on theories. Here is an example of a diagram which is a model uh, from uh, FOG, a behavior model for persuasive design, where it supports that high motivation and high ability of the person in combination with triggers in the proper time can lead to the new behavior that the person wants to succeed to, to do. So this is a model that is based on many behavior change series and frameworks. Frameworks are step-by-step -step processes for designing, for example, uh, like uh, questions or checklists. Uh, and of course, there are many of those and they are used in practice and in research. The thing is that most of the times when it comes to use this theory, these frameworks, we adjust them based on the situation. So the design process, as we see, is quite messy. We may have tools to control it, but still we need to adjust these tools based on the situation that we are it's time. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video for the chapter 4.